To get started then, I am Gary Freeman, and in my present role, I have the opportunity to review many monitoring visit reports from many different companies. Many of these are during third-party audits, because I'm an audit company. We do third-party audits for device and drug companies on their sponsor trial master files, as well as site audits. So we see the, the records. Of course, at the site, there's not going to be a monitoring visit report. There'll be the follow-up letter, which certainly should match the monitoring visit report, so we will double check that whenever we do audits with the trial master file from the sponsor. We need to remember that all the monitoring visit reports, whether it be the qualification visit, the initiation visit, the routine or interim visit, and the closeout visit, all of those are critical essential documents that are auditable in a regulatory authority inspection. We often see these referred to in an FDA 483 after an inspection uh, or in a warning letter. They're going to be listed under the finding of inadequate monitoring. So we don't want to have that hitting on your company. Inadequate monitoring is one of the highest deficiencies noted in FDA inspections and continues to be year after year after year. So let's look at some of the learning objectives that we have for today. First of all, we're going to look at the requirements of documenting monitoring activities for a device study. Where does it say we have to do that? It's going to be in the Code of Federal Regulations and in the International Conference on Harmonization. We're going to look at the importance of a well-written monitoring visit. Why does it matter? Besides the fact that it's audited by the regulatory authority. The day-to-day -day operation, as well as potential inspections, should be our concern here not just if we should get inspected, but what about in the meantime? Who else does it help? And then lastly, we're going to also look at how can we effectively manage our site and sponsor activities. This is what the monitoring visit report is going to tell the reviewer, how well we are managing our site and our study, and how do we document that appropriately. Remember, the information from the monitoring visit report translates to the follow-up letter for the sites. So it's extremely important that we have this well balanced. So let's look then at the requirements of documenting. Where does it tell us that we have to do this and how do we do it? In this graphic here, we're seeing the monitor at the upper left. He or she is writing that report, possibly at the site. We sometimes get some time to pull some of the things together while we're sitting at the site. Otherwise, we're back at our desk and we're writing these reports. Obviously, we're probably using a computer rather than a book, as this girl here is doing in her diagram. We have a manager who is looking at that report in the bottom left. It might be the monitor looking at it after it's been printed out, looking to see that everything is completed. We would hope that there are no blank spaces. It's then going to be moved over into the pile of other monitoring visit reports for this site on the upper right. We need to make sure that one report leads to the next report, which leads to the next report. And so it should go chronologically along. There should be no missing visits, obviously. Unfortunately, there sometimes are. Someone in our organization most likely has a little checklist, like on the bottom right, documenting that we have our confirmation letter, our monitoring visit report, our follow-up letter, and our expense report for each visit that we've made. They should be looking to see that we're following our monitoring plan, that the visits are in the time frame that they're required to be. Now, they're not required to be in a certain format or a certain frequency by the, by the regulatory authority. It's by our own monitoring plan, our own SOP. So we need to match that up. Some definitions. First of all, if you could unmute your line and tell me what is monitoring? In your words, what is monitoring? When you go out to monitor, what, is, what are you doing? Well, um, there are two major, two big things that um, we look for when uh, monitoring any clinical trial. Um, the first is patient safety. Are patients consented? Are, they, are, are, are safety events being reported? Um, and is the data credible? Um, so those are the two biggest things, data integrity and patient safety. Okay, perfect, perfect. And what type of, uh, of studies do you run? What's your therapeutic area? I'm not familiar with your company. Medical, actually medical device. What type of medical device are you working with? We actually work um, with cardiac ablation devices. Okay, okay, yep. okay. 
I, I sort of thought cardiac when I saw the atri at the start of, the, of your company's name, but I didn't want to make any assumption. <laughs> Okay, great. So you're talking about some very serious pieces. So we want to make sure that these reports are as technical as possible and give that safety element precedence here. So you're, you're absolutely correct. You're looking at safety for the patient, which is number one in FDA's criteria as well, as in any regulatory authority across the globe, and also the credibility of the data. Can we trust what we're getting? Because this is what we're going to be telling the FDA when we prepare our, ND, our um, PMA for them, that all the data in this report is accurate and complete and that we've cared about the safety of the patient. The patient always comes first.